Hello, well, different video today. I'm uh, driving down to the studios at uh, Chelmsford for BBC Radio Essex. Um, uh, got a half hour slot on their Essex Sounds uh, program uh, where I'll be talking drones and aerial photography and aerial video. Uh, haven't really got a script, not really sure what we'll be talking about. Um, it's live, so um, it should be good fun. I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm absolutely sorry. Here we are in the uh, suite. Yeah, I'm going through it. I also like to speak to vloggers, podcasters, YouTubers, those kinds of people, community radio as well, uh, who we regularly speak to in this slot. So I'm delighted to say that I am joined now by a YouTube channel operator or a YouTuber, we could call him. Ian in London has come to BBC Essex tonight to tell us all about what he does. Good evening, Ian. Hello, Jodie. How are you? I am well, thank you. How are you? Very, very good. Thank you so much for having me down. You're more than welcome. It is a great pleasure to have you here. Now, I would like to know uh, about your YouTube channel in a nutshell. What will people, what, if you're sort of looking at your, your little grid of what it all looks like, what are they going to see from uh, you? They'll see two main types of videos, basically. They have tutorials. It's all about drones. Have to state the obvious. Yeah. Uh, they'll have two main types of videos. Uh, one will be uh, tutorials to show you how to fly, how to uh, work the settings on your various uh, on the various models of the drones, and how to take good video and good photos. Because ultimately, that is the main reason why I fly drones. Um, the other type of uh, video that you'll see is just literally uh, I call it sit back and enjoy the view, and uh, it's literally just beautiful clips put together with music, no message, no tutorial. It's literally just flying around having fun. Wonderful. I will ask you more in just a moment about the tutorial side and okay. how this all came about. But how about your your first ever drone and your first ever video? How long ago was this that you dipped your foot into the world of aerial photography? Well, I could go videos? back about four years when I bought one of these toy drones and it had no GPS, no stabilisation, and it literally just flew away into the trees. Um, and then I got a uh, better drone. Uh, it was the DJI Phantom 3. That's it. And that had GPS stabilization. And suddenly it was a drone that I could control. You could take your hands off the control and it would just sit there and, you know, behave. Yeah. So um, after having that for about a year and a half without any crashes whatsoever, I thought, great, I can trust myself to upgrade. The Mavic Pro had just been released over a thousand pounds. There's a lot of money to pay for a flying camera. And I figured, yep, I can trust myself um, spending this money. So I got the Mavic Pro and then I had a bit of a disaster <laughs> about two weeks. Oh, no. Two weeks after flying it, um, I was flying down over the White Cliffs of Dover. And unfortunately, I had a few mistakes and a bit of bad luck stack up against me. And I ended up losing my drone. Did it crash into the White Cliffs of Dover, Ian? It, it crashed somewhere and it would almost <laughs> certainly have been in the White Cliffs of Dover. I spent no. five hours looking for it the following day. Poignant, and, uh, but not yeah, ideal. No. But what I actually did there was uh, I made a bit of a tutorial. I analysed the flight logs that had streamed to my phone so I could see exactly what had gone wrong. And, um, yeah, I, I put together a little video more just to help some people on the, um, the drone forum that I uh, used to, you know, get my information from so they wouldn't make the same mistake. And suddenly I just found this video being watched more and more and more. And I was getting comments from all around the world, Australia, New Zealand, uh, you know, everywhere. And they were all like, you know, really sorry. Thank you for. And goodbye Mavic Pro lost over the White Cliffs of Dover oh. was my first YouTube video that kind of just went nuts, basically. And uh, I think it's on about 100 50, 160,000 views now. It really does show there's an appetite, isn't there? Because people don't want to make that mistake. They certainly don't. Not when they've spent a thousand pounds on their uh, on their camera. So um, yeah, it kind of I think it struck a chord with people basically. And uh, like I said, I was very open about what went wrong. I made some mistakes. But uh, what really surprised me was that people started subscribing. I didn't have any idea about you know. I, I just posted this video just for fun, basically. And people start subscribing and they're like, OK, so they're expecting me to make more videos. So what can I talk about? Well, I learned a lot from that first experience and I made really sure that I wasn't going to make the same mistake again. And I started putting together tutorials. And that's kind of how the YouTube channel just took off, basically, uh, you know, showing people. I read the instruction manual. I make the mistakes and then do a five minute video on how to not make those mistakes and how to fly properly. And people like that. I think we've got a little clip of one of your videos <coughs> explaining uh, pretty much the backstory there, as, as you've just said. Uh, this okay. is you talking about the reasons behind your YouTube okay. channel. 
only about a minute and a half. This yeah, is not very long. Good. Can you hear it? Oh, uh, well. Yeah. Nice music. Yeah, I, I try and make quite a bit. I was, thinking, I was I kind of wish me. Welcome to my I wish people could actually see. Uh, say, yeah, YouTube I know. Radio, yeah, I know. We way. can we'll direct people <laughs> towards it. But um, uh, but this is like nearly two minutes. This clip of you in the USA. So let's talk about why it's called, what it's called, and your yeah. own background, if that's all right. Yeah, 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 sure. And then we'll Minus play out the clip of you in the you US, like and then we can talk about in, in our little final yeah. section some of the best yeah, stuff you've yeah, done. Sure, yeah, yeah? Sure, sure. here we go. Just a little flavour of Ian in London. He has a YouTube channel showing off the amazing perspectives drones can give to photos and video and helping people fly better and safer with drones. Ian is in the studio here at BBC Essex tonight. You're an Essex man, Ian, but Ian in London. <laughs> OK, yeah. Well, um, in fairness, I used to live in London. I still work in London. I commute every day. And uh, But when I actually set the channel up, I wanted to give a bit of a, uh, an international flavour to an area that was pretty much dominated by American YouTube channels. And uh, I'm sure many people around the world may have heard of Essex, but everyone in the world has heard of, e of London. Sorry. They have. <laughs> and so that's why I just thought Ian in London's got a nice, uh, simple ring to it. And uh, yeah, I just I just chose that. It's sim simple as that. It's They're the those. big brand. Yeah, I was going for big brand and simple as that. Very <laughs> good. So lots of people can find you on there. And from that first video of, of explaining your mistakes and yeah. telling people how not to do it, uh, what sorts of things have you focused on? Because you, you touched on it a moment ago but you're, you're looking at other drone models and, and that kind of thing, as yes. well as beautiful landscapes. That's it. I mean, like I said, you have some people that fly because they like flying model aircraft or drones, but I got into it purely for the different perspectives you get. And you do get amazing perspectives when you're looking down from above. And so for me, it's all about the photo. It's all about the video. So half of my tutorials are on how to actually fly the drone and not crash it. And the other half of my uh, tutorials are generally about how to get very good dynamic video where you're moving the drone, you're moving the gimbal, the camera, doing a lot of, you know, uh, multiple controls and uh, trying to focus on the actual subject it is you're trying to film at the same time and not crash. So there's a lot going on, basically. Uh, but uh, that, that's what I find the most useful. That's what uh, people uh, like to watch. Uh, the quieter videos that are just, as I said, you know, sitting back and enjoying the view, uh, they're more fun for myself. They're never actually that, uh, they're not watched that that much by uh, by uh, most people. Uh, most people want to hear a message. They want to hear you talking. They want uh, to find out, you know, how to improve their own skills. And they're the videos that seem to do better. But at the end of the day, that's the beauty of YouTube. It's your own channel. You can do a happy mix, things that you really like and that are important to you and things that you know are probably going to do a little bit better with regards to the views and uh, and be watched by people around the world. Had you had any experience with anything like this before <clears throat> you started your first ever by accident video? No, I mean, I'd always been good with uh, cameras and I'd always had a, a, you know, a keen eye for photography. Uh, not so much video, it has to be said. And uh, that, that was the amazing thing. Uh, when I got into the drones, I was suddenly like, wow, you can actually take really, really good video. And, you know, these models like the uh, Mavic 2 Pro that, I, that I've got here in the studio, it's got a 4K ultra high definition camera. It's got three axis stabilizing gimbal. So no matter how windy it is, uh, no matter how fast you're flying, it still stays focused on the subject and you end up with very, very smooth video. So it's been a real learning uh, curve, but um, it, it, it's it's just great fun. I Have just... you made a video about how not to crash that one? Because I'm sensing <laughs> with all the gear that it's got on it and all the specs, <clears throat> it's going to be worth quite a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. I have to say, you don't get any change from a £1,000 for this model. <laughs> it is DJI's uh, pretty much the most recent model they released. Um, yeah, I, I think I actually did do a, a video on, I think, 15 uh, top causes of crashes and flyaways, basically everything you should not do uh, with, with a drone. And funny enough, that has actually been my most successful. I think it's on almost 200,000 views now because people don't want to lose this amount of money. They don't no. want to crash. And the trouble is they're so delicate. You only crash them once. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. When you drop they, it from a few hundred feet, there's not a lot left of it when it's hit the ground. They look quite <laughs> fragile as they objects, are, they don't are. they? They've They're got sort fragile. of spindly legs yeah. and, the, and the very small sort of propellers. You know gimbal, that if that's easy. going down, yeah. ain't nothing coming back. <clears throat> but, you know, they don't. 
they generally will only crash when you hit something. Mm. So it's normally a tree um, or, or a building. A and Yeah, or a cliff. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, um, above. yeah, you know, that that's that's my message. Stay away from trees and buildings. Good message. <laughs> Let me just bring you um, a final clip for this part before we go to the travel news. Uh, this is you doing a little bit of filming of the eclipse in the USA oh, in yes. 2017. Yes, Let's yes, have a yes. listen. Sorry, I didn't get a chance to look at chat because I have open media open and not the thing and then I don't have the brain space to be able to click, click that because oh, I'm sorry. What, what were you saying? Oh, don't do okay, it. Sorry. I travel and then I'll move clip two off to Eilish. Sorry. Well, we can have a bit more chat this way, can't we? Yeah. We'll still get to the travel like 46. So. The travel's there for you. I'll Thank you. Chris New in them. Oh, yeah, lovely. Get his props. What props has he got, eh? What's he look like he's brought in with him? <laughs> Is it alcohol? <laughs> yeah, I thought I'd have a good quick stiff gym before I yeah. massive head back. <laughs> oh god. It's um Wilkinson's are coming in for the next part of the programme. And the people who set it up were like, We'll bring in some props. Are they props I can eat? That's what I wanna do. I will make the comment that mm. it really is better if you watch the video mm. rather than listen to it. We can me. do that, we can do that, yeah, that is fine. <laughs> They're not too long, hopefully, no, they no, just give no. a little flavour, but obviously the visuals are yes. very important. Um, I'll do the travel news, sure. and then I've got a song to play, but then we'll have our little final bit cool. of chat. Uh, before you busted up. Now, you didn't want to talk about Gatwick or anything like that, did um, you? I was just thinking, yes. I'd quite like to just yes. briefly touch on it, yeah. because people who don't know a lot about drones will be thinking to themselves, there's, there's well, how can you fly really this? Because most consumer drones can't fly near airports. Yes. It's simple as that. Yeah. The yeah. And so I would like to get that. Yeah, we, we shall do that in this last little bit. Right. So I've got to do my travel news first. Sure, sure. And then Ian in London, in the USA, in this particular case. We will hear more from him in just a second. You're listening to Let's continue the conversation now with Ian in London. He is a YouTuber from Essex, uh, despite what the name might say, as we have learned, he's very much Essex-based. Ian, a lot of people, uh, and maybe some people listening to this, may have quite negative views about drones because if you haven't ever sort of interacted with one or looked at a video, your only knowledge of them might be things you've heard in the press, in the media last year when, was it Gatwick, was yeah. entirely closed <clears throat> down by yes. drones flying near just before Christmas for yes. a few days and it was an utter nightmare. What exactly is the legal standing and the requirements around flying a drone could i just go to stampstead airport now put one up in the air and start flying it around willy-nilly no generally um the majority of, well all consumer drones um they have uh, electronics that stop this from happening certainly all the dji drones and they're the market leaders also the parrot drones are the unique drones they all have something called geofencing that stops them going anywhere near airports mm -hmm. um, there are very strict rules on where you can and can't fly drones there's no denying that you know you can go down to uh curries pick up a drone and fly it from your back garden if you're in the middle of a town and that's not what you're supposed to do you're supposed to stay at least 150 meters away from any built-up area mm -hmm. with regards to um gatwick it, you know the investigation there is still going on i firmly believe though that well it certainly wasn't uh, just some idiot who'd gone down to curries and and, and bought a drone yeah. they, they already have admitted that um that they're focusing on the idea of it being an inside job uh by somebody who either had some point to make or who at least knew the operations of an airport. Either way, that type of drone was a very large drone, and it uh, it did not have the electronics on board. So um, it could have been a self-built drone. It could have been uh, disabled, although disabling the electronics is extremely hard. So the point I'm trying to make is that 99.9% .9 of drones and drone flyers just want to go up and take uh, brilliant photos and videos. And it's really easy to do just that and it's very hard to get yourself into trouble in that respect so it is a bit of a shame that um in the press you only un unfortunately hear the bad negative stories you know drone takes amazing picture doesn't really make the news but if you watch any bbc especially any uh, uh nature program a lot of the documentaries now when you see those sweeping mm -hmm. panoramic beautiful shots they're not being done by boom cameras anymore you know on, on a big arm they're being done by the drones because 
it's and cheaper and better quality <coughs> and so much more efficient and all of those it. kinds of things. And, you know, they do, I mean, if uh, people do go and have a little look on uh, on my site, they will see plenty of videos where you think, you know, wow, you can actually take such amazing video uh, for, for such a relatively cheap outlay. Like I said, I mean, the Mavic 2 Pro that I'm, I'm using, that was just over a £1,000. But that is, you know, almost TV broadcasting quality um, uh, video that you're able to take. So, you know, um, like every uh, aspect in life, you know, you have car drivers that don't obey the rules. Uh, they speed. We don't ban cars because there's a few that go too fast. Um, there's drone registration coming in towards the end of this year. More and more drones are being controlled by apps and the apps can actually disable the drones. Again, you know, it's only a tiny minority that have the know-how to overcome that hack. So you've got to be determined to do mischief if you're actually going to do wrong with a drone. Uh, most people in general are just going to have fun and not get into that sort of trouble. Just quickly, when you first get a drone, who tells you the rules? Do you well, have to look at YouTube? And, uh, you know? Well, now every drone that's sold in the UK does come with the drone code. And uh, again, the DJI drones, they come hard programmed into beginner mode you can't fly more than 30 meters high uh, or far, uh, 30 meters from from your takeoff point until you've actually completed a little online quiz that is part of their app and uh, because the two are connected it forces you to at least know the basics but like i said towards the end of this year the caa are just bringing uh, bringing in um not only drone, uh, not only drone registration but also mandatory training. And that will almost certainly be some form of online test that is linked to the app that is controlling the drone. And again, 99% of people are just going to do the right thing and uh, and enjoy the equipment for what it is. Before we find out where we can watch your videos online, what are some <laughs> of your favourite places that you have been to put your drone up and look at the landscape? Well, I know it was my most recent trip, but Iceland uh, about a month ago absolutely uh, blew us away. It was fantastic. We were so lucky to have a lot of overnight snow followed by sunny, clear mornings. Uh, and once you get off the main tourist traps, I mean, around the main Golden Circle tourist, there's no drone signs everywhere. But to be honest, you wouldn't want to film there because there's so many people in your in your shot. So we went off the beaten track, went up to the northwest and just got staggering, staggering footage. I was so pleased with it. We went down to the Amalfi Coast in Italy uh, late last year. Beautiful, beautiful coastline there. Stunning uh, scenery again. So, you know, basically wherever it's away from people and beautiful, uh, you know, natural scenery, that's where I want to be. We're going back to the USA this summer again in June, going to Utah, Wyoming, Nevada. So we'll be doing another three, three and a half week road trip. And again, I'll just be, you know, happily filming away. Glorious. So, I want it. your life, Ian. <laughs> that sounds amazing. It is good fun. How it is good wonderful. Fun. Where can people watch these videos of yours then? So, well, you've, you've said the name of my channel, Ian in London. Um, I've also got a, a website, the same thing, ianinlondon.com. Um, but yeah, you just search on Google or on YouTube for Ian in London and up I pop. Thank you so much for coming to speak to us here. Jody, it's been fantastic. At BBC Thank you it's been so lovely much. to have you in. I'm sure this will be a video, won't it? It's not the I'll drones probably, are here. Yeah, I'll film you discreetly. We've not got the drones up at BBC. No, no, no. Just I didn't yet. think we want to fly them in the studio. No, the ceiling's quite low for that. Uh, thank you so much, Ian in London. Let's have the much promised song. So much, I'm really, really pleased. That's my first ever radio. Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? That's the first time I've been on radio, on live radio. Can we have a photo? So, yeah, yeah. let's share with you. Yeah. Really great to meet you. Take really care. Lovely. Really lovely meeting you. Take All care. Okay. Um, see you later. See you later. So, there we go. That was uh, good fun. Uh, I didn't uh, swear, didn't uh, fluff my lines, didn't have to do any retakes, and uh, it was a really, really good constructive conversation as well uh, able to put the positive side to uh, drones hopefully and uh, yeah I have to say uh, really enjoyed that so um, all in all very good uh, very good evening until next time have fun happy flying <laughs>